Hare Krishna. The attempt to assassinate American former President Donald Trump has sent shockwaves across America and indeed across the world, especially in political circles. To make sense of this, using the Bhagavad Gita, I'll talk about three Ps. But before that, we offer our prayers for the safety of Donald Trump as well as the safety of the political ecosystem wherein greater violence and destructiveness does not erupt. So the first P is polarization. This is unfortunately increasing dangerously across the world. While there have always been severe differences among countries and there have been wars and those wars are increasing with two major wars in the world happening with no end in sight for either of the wars. But uh, what is more concerning is the increased confrontation and even demonization among people on opposite sides of the political spectrum. It is natural that different political leaders from different parties will criticize each other and each other's policies. But what is important is to recognize that ultimately everyone is at their core similar to us. Everyone is a spiritual being. Everyone is a human being. And we sh the Bhagavad Gita says that perception in goodness sees the shared spirituality and humanity of all living beings. Sarva Bhuteshu Yenaikam Bhava Mavya Mirikshate 18.20 But there is perception in the mode of ignorance where Yattu Krutsnava Dekasmin Kariye Sakta Mahetukam Atatvartha Dalpam Cha Tattama Samudaharutam Where we take one portion of a person's identity their opinion on a particular issue and we reduce the entire person to that particular thing. So there is particular political candidate because they made this kind of statement because they have this kind of opinion. Therefore, they are demons. So recently in a prominent uh, American magazine, there was a picture of Donald Trump morphed to look like Adolf Hitler. And in the Western cultural imagination, if any historical leader comes close to being the devil incarnate, that is Hitler. So, at even today in history, attempts to assassinate Hitler are romanticized in Western movies. Because the idea is, he was out to destroy the world and anyone to try to stop him was doing a noble thing. So when this kind of depiction of any particular leader is done, that is an encouragement toward extreme measures. And some people who are of an unstable mind can use that as a justification, thinking that I am going to stop the world from destruction by destroying this person. So of course, the specific motives of the assassin will emerge and independent of what turns out over there, the point of polarization remains. And this is not just the Democrats demonizing Republicans. The Republicans are also guilty of such rhetoric. And such polarization needs to decrease. And that brings us to the second point, pacification. So we can hope and pray that the rhetoric is toned down. That America, which has come to a precipice and is peering down a deep, dark valley, of deadly danger and civil war which was to a large extent avoided just by a centimeter when the bullet missed Trump's head and grazed by his ear. So America pulls back from the precipice and that requires toning down of the political temperature, toning down of the political rhetoric. The Bhagavad Gita in 1715 talks about discipline of speech where it says anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyahitam chayat swadhyaya abhyasinam chayva vanmayam tapa uchyate 
So anudvega karam, don't speak things in agitating ways. This doesn't mean we sugarcoat and flatter. Satyam, we have to speak the truth. But even when the truth is provocative, we don't have to deliberately speak it in a provocatively inflammatory way. Now there is some sense of this when say for example, if there is a heinous crime such as a rape, then we don't publish the names of the victim of that rape. If there is some crime that has happened and it's in a communally sensitive area, then the specific names of the perpetrators are not pu published. So there is some understanding that we shouldn't be flaming the f f fire of discontent and anger that is simmering in people's minds. So let's hope that the pacification happens and to that end it's encouraging that across the political spectrum in America and across the world's geopolitical spread, the assassination attempt has been universally condemned. So that indicates that there is some hope that we see each other's humanity and we see what we share with each other. And that brings us to the last point, purification. That while pacification is a vital first step, eventually just toning down the rhetoric is not enough. We have to tone down the passions that are inside us. That happens to purification. The Bhagavad Gita states that Sattva Guna brings purification. It becomes pure, it brings purity and clarity. So that is what we need in today's world. Srila Prabhupada would say that there is no use of crying for world peace unless there is an awakening of divine consciousness in the individual. The Western transcendentalist Henry David Thoreau said something similar that better than a thousand hackings at the shoot of evil is one hacking at the root of evil. The shoots of evil are many in this world and most of us individually don't have the power to do anything about the various expressions of extremism, be it political, religious, secular, that are emerging across the world. But ultimately this emerges from anger and the urge toward violence in trying to resolve differences and conflicts. So if each one of us, by understanding the principles of the Bhagavad Gita, by connecting with the divine through yoga, through meditation, through prayer, we can purify ourselves of desire and anger, which often impel us towards destructiveness. Then that purification will be leading to a grassroots level change in something that will bring about in time, a change at the macro level. So, once again with our prayers for the pacification of the political temperature in the atmosphere that, so that the polarization decreases and individually purification increases through the adoption of uplifting spiritual practices. Let's hope that the Bhagavad Gita's wisdom can help us both make better sense of and make better sense in in terms of our actions amid this volatile situation in the world right now. Thank you. Hare Krishna.